Well, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to what I hope will be the final day of hearings of the mayor's proposed budget for 2016-2017. Uh, I'm Paul Krikorian, Chair of the Budget and Finance Committee, joined by my colleagues on the committee, Mr. Blumenfield, Mr. Englander, and Mr. Bonin, and we're ready to begin. Um, before we go to public comment, I just want to talk a little bit about the process that we've gone through so far. We've conducted, as of now, over 40 hours of hearings on this budget within this committee. Uh, we've heard presentations and asked extensive questions of more than 30 city departments and agencies. Uh, we heard an extensive presentation from the coalition of the Los Angeles City Unions. Uh, we heard from uh, presentation from the Neighborhood Council budget advocates who themselves put in countless hours of analysis and research into the budget and the city's budget priorities over the course of the year. Um, within that process, uh, this committee uh, proposed 133 budget memos, uh, which we've considered, and uh, many of those contain information which is going to be crucial in the decisions that we're making today and that the council will be making in voting on the final budget and beyond the budget as well um, throughout the course of the year as we continue to get our special study uh, responses back. So um, we will uh, begin today's hearing, and, and for those of you who haven't been to any of those uh, many meetings where we've had 40 previous, previous hours of hearing. This has been one single meeting. It has taken place over the course of several days, uh, but it's been a single meeting on a single agenda item. And so um, public comment has been satisfied each and every one of those days as we've taken comment at the beginning of the day. Um, nonetheless, we do have a lot of people who are interested in commenting on uh, the budget once again, and I'm going to entertain that, uh, that comment. Um, we do have a lot of cards, and we're gonna take, I'm gonna try to take all of them uh, before we begin our work today. Uh, but I would just ask you, in light of the long road that we've taken to get here, uh, please be respectful of, um, uh, of our need to get things done uh, in the remainder of the day. So. Um, uh, I will give each speaker one minute, and we will begin with uh, Steve Veres with the office of Senate President Pro Tem Kevin De Leon, followed uh, by Dr. Weisman, followed by Ann Miski, followed by Antonia Ramirez. And please uh, come on up and be re ready to speak when the next speaker, when the previous speaker concludes. Mr. Veres, welcome. Thank you, Councilman. Um, I'm here to speak on uh, item number one, I believe. It's uh, listed as a G2 um, parcel of property that the council is discussing in their budget. Um, I'm here representing the Senate Pro Tem, Kevin DeLeon, and I wanted to um, make a couple of comments on uh, the urgency of this matter for the state of California. Uh, the G2 parcel is probably the most important missing link uh, to the LA River uh, structure system of, of putting together um, the LA State Historic Park, Rio de Los Angeles uh, State Historic Park, the City of Los Angeles, and certainly a number of the efforts that are taking place with the LA River Bikeway um, through Metro. Uh, in 2015, last year, uh, Senator De Leon uh, worked closely with the gov governor in appropriating $25 million uh, for um, help to purchase and restore uh, this property and to make it be part of this uh, wonderful ecosystem in Los Angeles. And uh, I know this has been a, a long process in the making and uh, certainly it's, it's one of those things when it comes to state um, efforts that uh, we see our partnership as very uh, critical and keen um, working with the city and, and certainly in, and hopefully with our partners in the county. Uh, but it's to the point now where uh, we want to express some level of urgency um, each and every single year. And Mr. Krikorian, you know very clearly uh, what happens in budget appropriations. Um, we um, do have some concerns that uh, the longer the process takes, uh, the harder sometimes it will be to hang on uh, to those funds. Um, behind uh, this $25 million is an additional $100 million uh, uh, allocated through uh, Prop 1. 
and these are funds that are currently under debate at the state, and it is our, uh, very much our hope to see a significant portion of these monies coming to the upper Los Angeles River and uh, to be able to be utilized uh, together with this parcel and throughout the entire ecosystem from obviously the end of the West uh, Hills area and Chatsworth all through many of the districts that you represent here. Um, but this is uh, certainly marked for us as a key uh, parcel. It's a jewel parcel, it's a centerpiece parcel, and um, we see it at, in, in level of state significance um, because it integrates a number of projects that we've worked on over the last 10 to 15 years together with the city and the county of Los Angeles. So, you know, with that, I know there's going to be obviously robust conversations and uh, dialogue, um, but uh, with, uh, with some expression of urgency from the state level, we want to partner together with this. We want to see this thing move forward and we want to see uh, a great partnership between the city and the state. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. You read my mind. <laughs> Just the middle one. Thank you very much. All right. Um, our next speaker, uh, well, if you don't mind, Dr. Weissman, we'll go ahead and take uh, Ms. Miski uh, next. No, it's all right. You're there. Go right ahead. And then Dr. Weissman will follow, followed by Antonio Ramirez. Good afternoon, council members. I'm Ann Miski, CEO of Downtown Women's Center. I'm here today to speak in favor of the full $138 million funding towards homelessness. I'm also asking that you target budget dollars towards specific populations. We have seen the success we have had with both veterans and families. Targeting works. Therefore, we were thrilled to see that the CLA has included our two budget asks, the housing gap analysis and trauma-informed care training, in their recommendations. Since 2013, the fastest growing group of homeless individuals has been women, an increase of 55%. And these two items will effectively help reduce these numbers. I know the decisions you are making today are extremely difficult, but we urge you to vote for the full homelessness budget, including our two asks. I also want to say a sincere thanks to all of you. We are so appreciative of your continued attention and real commitment to this issue during what I know has been an extremely difficult budget process. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Dr. Weissman, followed by Antonia Ramirez, followed by, by Miguel Luna. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to detract a little bit and thank you for the lovely lunch the other day and a call last night. I was surprised at that. Just in case anybody hasn't seen it, I'm holding in my hands the budget. And this is what these gentlemen have been working on and one lady have been working on so hard. I'd like to add, though, some additional cost. As you know, Brandon Pender has been working to keep a radio program going on a minor radio station for several years. You also know, I know, that I did 160 television programs, and one thing I'd like you to do is to consider, before you close the budget, some funding for this program and some support for it if the funding isn't possible, because I think this is one of the most important things that you do, one of the most important things that neighborhood councils do, that is outreach. To be able to let the public know what you are doing, to let the neighborhood councils interact with their constituents, which is a greater constituency than that of the city, is of vital importance to our growth. And so I present that to you for last minute consideration. Thank you. Very Thank you very much, much Dr. Weiss. Uh, our next speaker is Antonio Ramirez, followed by Miguel Luna, followed by Raul Macias. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, on your proposed budget, we must, we must stop all subsidies uh, to all jealous, nosy, uncivilized, racist, hate-mongering wetbacks and chango gangbangers. Stop creating a welcoming roadmap to them. Do not entice them. Do not give them Im imaginations that they are all welcome here illegally. That's why we're voting for Donald Trump. Having said that, make it a priority to first house and heal all our United States military veterans, our baby boomers, and our senior citizens, legal law-abiding citizens. And, well, and start investigating all shelters and nonprofit organizations and crack organizations that are supposed to help all these crack kids, all these homeless people, and they don't. They're pocketing the money. Again, investigate them and take that away or shut them down and bring the monies back into the coffers of the city. God bless Donald Trump and the United States military. 
Thank you very much. Uh, our next speaker is Miguel Luna, followed by Raul Macias, followed by Michael Drennan. Thank you. That was a long minute. <laughs> Thank you for the countless hours that you've spent in this process. I'm here uh, to tell you to please support the inclusion of the G2 parcel in the mayor's proposed budget, to please set aside the funds necessary to ex um, invest. Um, I'd like for you guys, uh, for the council members, to please not see this as an expenditure, but rather as an investment that would yield returns in a healthy community and in a healthy environment, and that no site is more important, and that you can't move the river. So it's where the investment needs to happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Raul Macias, followed by Michael Drennan, followed by Helen Lessig. We support the budget from the, um, for the Rio, Rio, Rio Los Angeles. Our community needs that space. We have a big problem with the health of, of families and kids, median income or, or low income families and that side. And we have this opportunity to give something to this families to this community. This, this is the momentum to give to our people. For 20 years, we have delayed this opportunity for our community. I don't know what's, what's going on, if this is not happening. But we have to think with our hearts and our mind for the best for our people. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker is Michael Drennan, followed by Helen Lessig, followed by Christian Kasperkovitz. Good afternoon, Mr. Corn. I, I have the uh, honor of uh, serving as the president of the board of directors of this Council for Watershed Health. We're in our 20th year celebrating uh, a group of folks that got together actually around the idea of the restoration and revitalization of the Los Angeles River. And they've, we've actually had our eye on this parcel for 20 years. And we have a great opportunity, you have a great opportunity to leverage funds that are being offered by the state of California to make this basically a linchpin in this 51 mile green space that's envisioned uh, a reality. So I just in encourage you, and it sounds like you got a really tough job here, and. Uh, Really encourage you to take this moment. It's a, I think it's a once in a lifetime opportunity, and uh, we would uh, have uh, our founder Dorothy Green can't be with us here today because uh, she passed away a few years ago. But I can see her smiling down on this group uh, making this decision. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, our next speaker is Helen Lessig, followed by Christian Kasperkovitz, followed by Tony Tucci. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm here to speak and encourage the council to provide $60 million for the purchase of the G2 parcel. This parcel is extremely important, not only for the, the river community, but for each of us in creating a LA river that involves breaking ground, that involves creating a common ground and continuing the fun that we have had in creating the original LA River plan. So please, it is fun. This is not a difficult decision. Please put aside that $60 million for G2 parcel. Thank you. Our next speaker is Christian Kasperkovitz, followed by Tony Tucci, followed by Allison Simon. Uh, thank you. I'm here to ask to set aside $60 million for the Taylor G2 yard. Uh, last I read LA uh, lags far behind many cities in our country for a green space for its citizens. This is a particularly important space because it's along the river and it could be the triple crown of parks following uh, the great success of Grand Park, the rehabilitation of Pershing Square, and then to have a park that's really about the river and our natural heritage would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker is Tony Tucci, followed by Allison Simon followed by Eric Previn. Council members, my name is Tony Tucci from Citizens for Los Angeles Wildlife, and I'd like you to um, continue to advocate for Council File 14-0518 and include in this year's budget a, a, um, a planner for the Wildlife Corridor Ordinance. Um, 
you know, please continue your support and join in with Council Member Koretz. Don't leave him out on a ledge, or I should say, don't leave him out on a ridge line. Uh, a ridge line ordinance is a priority at the county, and the ridge line ordinance works. A wildlife uh, corridor ordinance is essential because you know that we are all basically just uh, renting our hillsides. Our mutual public benefit is something that we're incrementally chipping away with, away at, and we have a gold rush um, in planning going towards our hillsides. So please include a wildlife habitat ordinance planning person in the budget this year. Please add the item. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Allison Simond, followed by Eric Previn, followed by Yvonne Michelle Autry. Hi, I'm Allison Samard of Citizens for Los Angeles Wildlife, and I'm going to continue uh, a little what Tony was just Tony Tucci was just saying. You know, last month, full council unanimously passed uh, Wildlife Quarter Motion CF 140518. Uh, the idea of, of having a full-time scientist in planning to, you know, look at residential environmental actions will pay dividends towards a healthy wildlife and ecosystem for L.A. residents as a whole. For too long, L.A. policies have passed without consideration to L.A.'s environment, but we are out of time. Planning needs a scientist to specifically focus on wildlife corridors, ridgeline ordinance, and any other wildlife habitat compliance issues. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Eric Previn, followed by Yvonne Michelle Autry, followed by Lewis McAdams. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Council President uh, Krikorian. Um, I am concerned about 60 seconds on the budget. Uh, it's very, very hard, but there are so many items that are of interest. Um, I can just simply start at uh, the proposal to have $310,000 additional revenue from building and safety for the code enforcement program. Uh, there are some confusing uh, assumptions of the backlog. Some, somewhere they said there are 10,000, and in another document they said there are 12,000. It's almost impossible. I know Englander is not here. Uh, item number 105 is the, some MICLA request that has been quickly shunted. It's item 105 um, to cover software uh, into the general fund request for $2 million for computer-aided dispatch system. I mean, this is a well-funded group that has a lot of money for the dispatch system, so I don't know where that goes. There's another one that caught my attention, item 82 for LAPD for radio maintenance, which is a request for hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, which I just cannot understand how radio maintenance, we regularly give away radios, and now uh, apparently I'm out of time. What about the yes. item 69, which is the city hall request for security? They want to spend an additional Thank million Thank dollars. You. Our next speaker is Yvonne Michelle Autry, followed by Lewis McAdams, followed by William Preston Bowling. Uh, one minute is not enough time. You know, this is the city's money, which is our money. And on the last 13 years that I've been a stakeholder downtown, I've seen the proliferation of more upscaled uh, restaurants, whereas before this was an environment where people of all uh, economic, uh, uh, socioeconomic backgrounds could uh, enjoy dining and restaurants. And for instance, the Grand Market, Grand Central Market is now catering to the upper class. I object to that. You need to make sure, main, maintain an environment economically where downtown is accessible for dining, not just housing, for all people. And again, do not use your money to finance the CIA and covert attacks, experiments, uh, using us as target practice. Uh, sex slave trafficking, which you're hiding. Do not use your money to exterminate or eliminate or silence, because some of us will not be silent or reticent in this. Um, ex exercises and mind control, depopulation techniques. There are people called TIs. Uh, again, I do not need this money to be used towards that end. Right. We will not be silent Thank as it is. Thank you, you need very to much. use it to encourage Thank you. Thank um, you. We, the Thank you very much. Your time has expired. Our next speaker, you need, to, you need to sit down. Your time has expired. You need to sit down, please. You're disrupting this meeting or you'll be asked to leave. Our next speaker is Lewis McAdams, followed by William Preston Bowling, followed by Charlotte Pinkos. Would it be easier to have the handheld mic? I have a mic. Can you hear me? Yes, indeed, Mr. McAdams. We can always hear you. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to, I, as I look around this room, I see probably 100 people, 120 people. 
that have been working on the LA River over the last 25 or 30 years. And I'd like all of us to just give each other a hand for a few seconds. It's been a long journey and we're coming to an, uh, one of the great points when we can actually celebrate a victory. Uh, <laughs> Last weekend, Friends of the Los Angeles River finished the three weekends of the, of the river cleanup, the annual LA River cleanup. Uh, we collected something like 50 to 70 tons of trash. 9,000 people took part, and it was a, a good time was had by all. But the river is cleaner now than it's ever been since we've been on it. And I just want to say it's only going to get better, especially with the support of you guys and the support of the city of Los Angeles. And thank you very much for your time and for your long effort on behalf of the river. Thank you very much, sir. Our next speaker is William Preston Bowling, followed by Charlotte Pinkos, followed by Joe Edmiston. Hi, William Preston Bowling, Special Projects Manager at Friends of Los Angeles River. And uh, we urge you to set aside a $60 million for the Taylor Yard G2 parcel. It'll uh, definitely help uh, create um, the jewel that we need for that area. And we uh, set out a social media campaign, and we got about 710 signatures to support this issue as well. And I just would like you to know that. And thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Uh, our next speaker is Charlotte Piencos, followed by Joe Edmiston, followed by Sarah Armstrong. Good afternoon. I'm Charlotte Piencos. I represent the Nature Conservancy, which is a science-based biodiversity conservation nonprofit. Uh, our mission is to protect the lands and waters on which all life depends, and that doesn't just apply to beautiful wilderness places way outside the city. It applies especially here in Los Angeles. <laughs> Uh, and our mission drives us today to ask for your support in restoring the funding for G2 and Taylor Yards. We believe that river restoration is vital for people and nature in Los Angeles. And that location is so important for the ecological benefits it can offer. And I thank you for your support of that today. Thanks. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Joe Edmiston, followed by Sarah Armstrong, followed by Jennifer Sampson. Mr. Chairman and members, Joseph Edmiston, Executive Director of the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy. The uh, burning smell that you have is the state money in my pocket that's burning a hole through that pocket. And we hope that the city council, by adopting a budget that will have money for the G2 parcel in Taylor Yard, will be able to put out that fire in my pocket, transfer that uh, $20 million for acquisition and $5 million for initial public use uh, to the benefit of the city of Los Angeles. Please help us do that quickly. Uh, secondarily, uh, we want to make sure that Mr. Koretz's motion approved a couple of weeks ago by this body uh, for wildlife corridors that there is actually funding in the city planning department to implement that and I hope that uh, we can we can achieve that in this budget as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sarah Armstrong followed by Jennifer Sampson followed by Ignacio Lopez. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Sarah Armstrong, Director of Industry Affairs for Americans for Safe Access, the nation's oldest and largest advocacy organization for medical marijuana patients. We're here today to ask you to recommend to the council that they withdraw item eight from the list of uh, suggestions for uh, funding the homeless program. Patients, not dispensaries, pay all marijuana taxes in the city. They currently pay a combined 15% tax. If you add the 15% excise tax, they'll be paying 30%. That is something that they cannot be reimbursed by their health program, nor do they, or nor are they allowed to deduct it from their taxes. Legitimate medicine should be taxed differently from vices. Uh, the letter that was distributed to you all today at the back has a memo on why marijuana is good medicine. I won't go into it here, we don't have enough time. Of all the suggestions, only one would bring in less money than taxing marijuana. If we wait, 
open the city up to a wide variety of marijuana businesses and tax Thank them you. at a small amount, you'll have more than you, enough. Thank you. So please Thank consider you, opening up Thank you. and licensing more Thank you. Uh, businesses. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Our next speaker is Jennifer Sampson, followed by Ignacio Lopez, followed by Melissa Pools. Good afternoon, and thank you, Chairman and Committee. Um, I'm uh, Jennifer Sampson, Director of Real Estate for River LA, and I'm here to speak on behalf of funding all river projects, especially G2, but in particular the La Crete's Crossing. Uh, the bridge in North Atwater has been a dream of the city and its constituents since the late 90s, and it's been a long road from its designation as project number 147 in the LA River Master Plan in 2007 up until today, 2016 where we have 90% of the funding to make this bridge a reality, take it off of the paper planning and make it real. Um, I have in my hand dozens of signatures of support for this bridge, and uh, I can't emphasize enough that we've spent uh, the past several years raising almost $9 million in a combined public and private financing, and that will go away if we don't get the $1 million for the bridge. So thank you. Appreciate thank it. you. Our next speaker is Ignacio Lopez, followed by Melissa Poles, followed by Yadira Serrato. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Ignacio Lopez from River LA, and I support all river funding, specifically the La Crete's uh, River Crossing. The bridge helps our community in a plethora of ways to include, but not limited to, a safer crossing from Atwater Village directly into Griffith Park for the pedestrians and bicyclists in our community. The LAPD Mounted Police will benefit from using the bridge as well, since they travel from, Griff travel from Griffith Park uh, to Atwater Village multiple times per day, and in doing so disrupt vehicular traffic on Los Fields Boulevard, which also causes stresses on their horses. Thank you. Our next speaker is Melissa Pools, followed by Yadira Serrato, followed by Armando Herman. Good afternoon, and thank you. I'm Melissa Poles, the Development Manager for Fundraising for River LA. I'm here in support of all the river funding, um, and in particular also in support of the La Crete's Crossing. The future funding of the next generation of infrastructure for Los Angeles is through a true and trusting relationship and partnership between public funding and the private philanthropic community. It is of the utmost importance that we keep the philanthropic community engaged. There's a great deal of interest among donors right now in the idea that a donation can be leveraged with an increasing public benefit through public funding, particularly because it creates collective impact that is greater than the sum of its parts. We need to show our commitment to the philanthropic community and continue the partnership to ensure that we meet the needs of the future of LA. Please send the right signal to the philanthropic community today that the city of LA wants their partnership and will show this commitment by preserving the funding for the $1 million in the city budget towards La Crete's Crossing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, our next speaker is Yadira Serrato, followed by uh, Armando Herman. Hello, my name is Yadira Serrato and I work for the Trust for Public Land. The Trust for Public Land has been working along the LA River for over 20 years to ensure that community members throughout the 51 miles have access to green space. As a major priority of the LA River Revitalization Plan, the G2 parcel in Taylor Yard presents the opportunity to increase access to open space for underserved communities like Cypress Park and Glassell Park, and it also will preserve 40 acres for public use. If we want to have a complete LA River restoration, we need funding to do it. While we commend the committee for the work they've done with the budget so far, we encourage the committee to reconsider setting aside funds that would enable the future purchase of the parcel. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker is Armando Herman, followed by Laura Mack, followed by Lois Arkin. Yes, I'd like to emphasize that there is no place like home in Los Angeles. This initiative to provide housing, sustainable, for those who are basically under the homeless person program, I wish to ask you, Kevin DeLeon, based on our first speaker today, that we need that $2 billion today and now, not later with Mitch Englander, but now. Because the county board supervisors provided you with a substantial amount of millions of dollars to help us with homelessness. You've taken no initiative to use the budget to implement 
more services, more programs, more activities to deal with people with disabilities, deal with our elderly, and tolerate the 54950 poor excuse of, of censorship by one fucking minute. So put us back on time, two minutes, and that's my public comment. <laughs> Our next speaker is Laura Mack, followed by Lois Arkin, followed by Lisa Hart. Hi there. My name is Laura Mack. I'm the founder and executive director of the Neighborhood Council Sustainability Alliance, which supports all 99 neighborhood and community, uh, neighborhood and community councils to foster green, healthy, and resilient communities across the city. Based on research from UCLA to the UN, we know that 70% of carbon pollution comes from cities like LA. And 70% of this pollution is caused by lifestyle choices that urban residents make. The truth is we can't get to a climate stable future or meet important local and state sustainability goals without significant help from city of LA residents. Of course, moving people to change their behavior is really tough. Conventional methods like education and incentive campaigns have a poor track record. After extensive search for a better way to move Angelinos to personal action on climate change, the NCSA is excited to participate in a pilot program called Cool Blocks LA, which draws on proven peer support and community building tools to help neighbors lighten their carbon and water footprints by 25% over a five month period. And we just want to thank you for your um, recommendation to approve funding for this program. Thank you very much. Uh, our next speaker is Lois Arkin, followed by Lisa Hart, followed by uh, Elva Yanez. Hi, I'm Lois Arkin. I, too, like Laura. Uh, I, I am in favor of um, this committee supporting the Cool Blocks program. I'm also the executive director of CRISP, the Cooperative Resources and Services Project, and its Institute for Urban Eco Villages at the Los Angeles Eco Village. So the big thing is that no matter how much uh, policy, policy we create, how much uh, regulation we create, how much money we allocate. Uh, the only thing that's really going to uh, change things the way that we need to change them in view of our greenhouse gases and our carbon footprint in this city is behavior change, cultural change. So the Empowerment Institute uh, has a track record for doing just that, for changing behavior resulting in culture change. And the Neighborhood Council Sustainability Alliance is prepared to work with the Empowerment Project to make behavior change happen here in LA with their Cool Blocks program. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, our next speaker is Lisa Hart, followed by Elva Yanez. And Mr. Williams, any more cards after this? Uh, any more cards? OK, so um, these will be the last speakers then. Ms. Hart? Hi, thank you. My name is Lisa Hart. I'm with the Neighborhood Council Sustainability Alliance. I want to thank you for supporting the Cool Blocks LA program. Also, on my own behalf, I would like to ask you to support the Wildlife Habitat Ordinance and projects in support of uh, restoration of the LA River. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry if I got the name wrong. Is it is uh, is it Yanez? Okay, Ms. Yanez, welcome. My name is Elva Yanez. I'm a California State Park and Rec Com Commissioner, and I'm also a park and open space advocate that's worked for many years in Northeast Los Angeles. G2 is a critical piece of the revitalization, uh, a key puzzle piece in the revitalization of the LA River. I urge you to take action today to include G2 in the budget. It's important to look at this issue from a public health and equity perspective. Creating parks in dense urban areas is more expensive than other kinds of projects. That's a fact. But the public health and equity benefits are real and priceless. Better health outcomes, reduced rates of chronic disease, these are the metrics that should be used in assessing this decision. The city, as the city moves in this direction, they also have to take into consideration mechanisms to prevent and mitigate the potential for displacement of longtime residents and small, small businesses. They should also reap the benefits of these improvements. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you to everyone who's come to speak uh, both today and throughout the many days of hearings that we've had on the budget. Uh, we appreciate your input very much.
Um, with that, I'd like to ask uh, the CLA to come on forward. And um, as they're working their way up, members, as I mentioned, we um, had 133, 133 budget memos, I think. So 133 budget memos uh, requesting analysis and consideration of a wide variety of priorities. Um, and uh, the CLA has, of course, considered all of those requests, um, dug deeper into the budget in order to try to identify uh, changes in assumptions, perhaps uh, updated information on revenues, uh, and in other ways, uh, try to find a way to be able to fund as many of those priorities as we can while still uh, keeping some uh, fiscal sustainability to our budget, reta retaining the high level of our reserve, um, and ensuring that we end up with a balanced budget. So um, with that, I'd like to ask Ms. So, if you could, to give an overview of the work that you've been engaged in over these last few days. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. You actually read my opening remarks. <laughs> so um, I actually won't go into much more detail than that. Um, Karen is going to walk you through the report. But um, we first want to do recognize that the proposed budget that was presented to you um, actually did incorporate a lot of your council priorities already. Um, it was only through these hearings that we found that there were additional concerns that were raised by your committee. And so uh, in that, we tried to do our best to uh, help identify additional resources to fund those uh, issues that were uh, most important to this committee. We also took into consideration uh, additional items that were transmitted uh, by your colleagues on the council that were submitted uh, as part of the public record. Um, we also tried to um, increase our contingencies and protect the reserve fund as well. So taking all of those things into consideration, there were about $40 million in requests uh, that came out of the committee in, uh, actions of last week. Um, we didn't tally up what was requested from, uh, from the public and from other members, uh, uh, other colleagues. And so, um, but what we did, we did our best. Um, we identified some additional revenue. We also did uh, update some of the expenditure um, estimates based on much more recent uh, information. And we also uh, reallocated a lot of funding. And this was all necessary in order to uh, achieve um, the the task that you guys set, that the committee set forward uh, for us. And so in summary, uh, Karen, uh, we'll walk you through, but in summary, uh, we did identify about $32 million in additional revenue. Um, in addition to that, we made about $21 million in expenditure reductions. And we made $41 million changes uh, that have some sort of budgetary impact. In addition to that, there is an, uh, $21 million in uh, changes that have no general fund impact, uh, mainly because it was uh, offset by fees or special funds. And there is also a series of other technical adjustments that uh, we are proposing um, in this uh, budget. The net result of all of that is a, a $20 million add to the budget. Um, we uh, are recommending funding to actually address either in whole or in part uh, many of the items that were presented to you. Um, we are recommending that you maintain other programs that did see additions to maintain them at current level to address some of the additional issues. Um, also to increase the reserve fund to uh, a 6% level and providing an additional $4 million to the mid-year reserve uh, line item for shortfalls, which we do know um, will be coming up uh, in the upcoming 2016-17 year. Uh, with that, um, we also are making a recommendation that um, I, I, you heard a lot of discussion with regard to uh, the MICLA financing program. Uh, we do, are recommending that um, the items, some of the items in that program be deleted simply because the council has not made a policy decision 
um, it, it is not saying that no to any particular project, but rather it's just saying not yet. And so it, it really is to retain council discretion to act uh, subsequently on those matters. Um, so with that, we would just... And actually, before you move yes. off of that point, could you just take a moment to um, explain the difference between identifying a project within MICLA for debt financing and an appropriation in the budget. Talk Certainly. about that so that, because I think um, some people have had some confusion about that and the significance of what it means to either have that line item in or not have it in. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So the MICLA process actually as part of the, what we have before us actually has no impact to the general fund. Absolutely none. It is um, only a suggestion that the council and the mayor may be issuing debt sometime in the future, which will require many subsequent approvals in the future. So all of this is just a plan. It's an idea. It's a suggestion. It does not appropriate any dollars for any project. And in fact, um, with regard to G2, we might as well talk about it, with regard to G2, um, there are a number of things ongoing right now uh, with regard to a uh, EIR. Um, there is a purchase and sale agreement, which we can't discuss yet because it is still under negotiations. And so that's something that we can't even talk about. But it hasn't been reviewed. It hasn't come to committee. It hasn't come to council. So in that respect, that is why we're recommending that the item actually be removed from here for now, but recognizing that when that information comes forward, that you will exercise your discretion to review the project in total and to determine the total project cost, the conditions, the terms uh, of the purchase and sale agreement before there is this suggestion that we issue any debt for this project. Okay. Very good. So Thank you. with that, I would like to turn it over to Karen. All right. Ms. Calfine, welcome. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, what we'll do is walk through the committee or the, um, the CLA recommendations. You have the report before you. And what we've done in the past and we can do today, if, it, if it's uh, agreeable to you, is we can go page by page. And if there are items that you wish to discuss, we can flag those and come back uh, after we've gone through the entire report and discussed those. If there's a quick question we can probably and we can answer it, we can do that uh, as we go through. I think that's consistent with the way the committee has uh, dealt with the CLA's recommendations in past years. Members, we have a 25-page report before us. Um, keep in mind that uh, when we're done with whatever changes or amendments we want to make to this report, this will essentially be the committee recommendation to council for changes to the mayor's budget. So if it is not contained in here, the mayor's budget as it was proposed stands. So what we want to do is refine this with any suggestions you may have. Um, we'll vote upon this as a as an entire report at the conclusion of the meeting. Um, but it would be appropriate, I think, as, as we, before we get there, to go through on a page-by-page -page basis. If there are specific recommendations, just sort of call them special, if you will, on a page-by-page -page basis. We'll flag them, and then we'll come back and we'll have a discussion so that we know the range of the issues that we're going to have to talk about, if that okay. works. Did you want to give any... Um, Overview, Ms. Kalfine, beyond what I, I think Michelle we've already really provided. covered that. Okay. So I think we can just jump right in and and go through the report. And actually, the recommendations begin on page eight, so we can start there. It's on the the page eight, and it's the page that begins with revenue changes. Members, any questions before we begin? Any comments or questions before we begin with that? Hey, is it in there? Do you want to call it special when we do that department budget? I'm sorry, sir. If we have something that, that is a change that is not reflected that we want to make, uh, do that at the end or when we get to that department? It, it, either way works. I think okay. it might make more sense for context as we get to a department. If you could sure. just flag it, that way we'll have it in mind when we have that conversation. Yeah, if it's something that can be done, you know, and it's a simple change, that might be best just yeah. to do as we're going through. If there's some discussion, you may want to come back and have that discussion. Great. Okay. All right, so beginning on page eight, 
uh, this, this page and continuing on to page nine are the revenue changes. So if there are any. So in that all of these add money to the budget, I assume there's no concerns or questions <laughs> about any of these things. Are there? On which On page, page eight. Eight or nine. All right. Okay. And Sounds good. Then page beginning nine, likewise. Yeah, beginning on page 10 are the expenditure changes. So, uh, there are, these involve the, ca the capital improvement expenditure program, the community-based development organizations, cultural affairs. Those that's the page that we're looking at. Nothing there. Okay, then we can move on to page 11, uh, with on the, beginning with disability, ethics commission, fire, uh, general, general city purposes. Mr. Kretz? Yeah, I, I have a question uh, from one of our colleagues. Uh, on the fourth and fifth items on the CLA's list under general city purposes, um, the reductions for lifeline reimbursement and Medicare, um, what exactly are those programs and why would we cut funding for them when there hasn't been a corresponding reduction to people living in poverty in Los Angeles? So Mr. Kretz, on the first item with regard to the lifeline estimate, this is actually the general fund appropriation. It's the general fund appropriation. This is the lifeline item. It's the general fund appropriation to help offset uh, the cost uh, of the solid waste fee, the, the trash fee, uh, for people who are enrolled in the program. Um, this reduction is actually based on the number of enrollees as well as anticipated enrollees through the end of the year. So based on that estimate, um, there is a, a reduction from the proposed budget amount. So there is no impact. We're, we're actually counting on at least 350 people enrolling every month through the end of the year and it covers all of the subsidies for those uh, enrollees. So it's just an estimate of how many people will actually be yes, enrolled. Yes. Okay. And with regard to the Medicare item, uh, that's simply based on a percentage of payroll that the city has to make for um, every dollar that we pay. So we have to pay into Medicare as well. And so this is also just based on a revised estimate uh, on the covered payroll. So again, just a reflection of the real numbers Correct. that we expect. Great, thank you. Okay, then so moving on to page, actually, oh, I'm on, sorry. On the bottom of uh, page 11, the recommendation regarding reducing uh, the line item for the gang injunction curfew settlement agreement, um, I'm gonna have a recommendation on that that I'll make by motion when we, a little okay. bit later. All right, and on uh, page 12, beginning with uh, homeless, uh, homeless uh, housing and community investment, human resources, benefits, information, technology, and neighborhood empowerment. Mr. Bonner? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Two uh, quick changes. One, under homelessness, that last item to decrease funding for rapid rehousing and put it into flexible housing, I just ask that we delete that recommendation. Uh, that's a policy discussion that needs to be worked out a lot more. Um, just leave it as it was in the mayor's budget. Uh, the second thing is in the first item under HCID, um, it says restore funding for operation of an existing art center. If you could just, it's a very small change, change that to existing community center. Sure. That's an important distinction that doesn't matter here, but it does in Venice. <laughs> Thank you. All right, anything else on this page, members? Your, your request is budget neutral, right? Because yes. You're, okay. All right. Okay, uh, moving on to page 13, beginning with personnel, planning, police department, Board of Public Works and Engineering. I'll take that as it looks fine. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm going to have a recommendation on funding for the human trafficking and prostitution details. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, th I think that's the only reference on this page. Mr. Kretz. I guess this would be an appropriate location to do this. Um, 
Relating to wildlife corridors, as was mentioned on April 25th of this year, the council approved an instruction to the planning department to work with the city attorney and various experts to create a wildlife corridor in the eastern area of the Santa Monica Mountains to guide future development in this area in a manner that protects our wildlife habitats. And I think we all recognize we need to expedite the implementation of that corridor to protect as much of our wildlife habitat as possible. So the first step to implement a wildlife corridor ordinance is the preparation of a wildlife open space study. Planning Department special funds are available to fund this first step beginning July 1st, 2016. And in addition, the Planning Department has agreed to use existing staff to complete the preliminary work so that on July 1st, 2016, the study could be launched. So I'd like to set aside in the unappropriated balance the special funding needed to immediately launch that study on July 1st of this year and begin the process of protecting our wildlife habitat by fully implementing the wildlife corridor ordinance. There's no general fund impact from taking this action. So I would propose that 250,000 from the planning, long range planning fund, schedule 29, be set aside in the unappropriated balance to fund the preliminary steps of the wildlife corridor by initiating a wildlife open space study. Okay. We'll okay. make so that we'll addition. come back to that. Well, we'll come back to okay. it. Okay. Yeah, we can come back to, for discussion about all these okay. items. Okay, no problem. <clears throat> Mr. Blumenfield. Yeah, not a change. I just want to. I just want to point out because we've had a lot of discussion on it um, that in this you're finding funding to hire an additional 300 civilian employees, which will put more police officers on the street, which is even more than what was, which was being requested, which is. A pretty big deal. So I just wanted to point that out, or maybe have you explain it a little bit in terms of what the impact that of, of that will have. But I, I didn't want that one to go by unnoticed because it's a big item. That's good. That's it. So, so the proposed budget submitted by the mayor anticipated uh, overall hiring of about 267 employees, roughly, with uh, a net. Uh, 92 uh, civilians by the end of the year. So what this um, action does would allow the LAPD to hire 300 employees uh, for a net 125 uh, additional civilians um, being uh, hired through the end of the year. One, so 175, I think. 175 attrition for a net 125 increase overall. Right, which which means potentially 125 officers out on the street additionally. Potentially, that would probably be more appropriately uh, directed to. Directed to that, but anyway, I just just wanted to point that out and, and congratulate you guys on being able to, to work that out. Just so we we're on the same page, um, what you're saying is always actually 100% correct. But the, I think there's just a typo there because it says over attrition, right? Oh, I beg your pardon, that should say 125 over attrition. I figured this was wrong because if it came from your mouth, it's right. So that's our correct report. So thank you for, for pointing that out, Mr. Bloomfield, because I think that's been a big priority for many of us. Um, I don't want to start down the road of highlighting a lot of things, but since so many people commented on it in public comment, I also do it while we're on the page. I wanted to also indicate that this, these recommendations include the funding for the uh, HPOZ uh, planning associate positions as well. It was a very high priority for many of the neighborhood councils and others who came before us. Um, all right, anything else on page 13? All right, moving on to page 14. Page 14 begins with public work sanitation. Uh, and if I may uh, make one correction on the item for public work, street services, sanitation, and general services, the third uh, bullet under there, the uh, 10 neighborhoods should be 15. I'm sorry, where is that again? It's the third bullet under the public work, street services, sanitation, and general services. It's toward the bottom of the page. Third arrow. Third arrow, yeah. Okay, the under correct cool, number should cool be 15. 15, all right. OK, 
Okay, anything on page 14, members? Uh, Mr. Chair, just to note that uh, uh, I'll want to propose uh, a change within the DOT budget um, revenue neutral to uh, implement the car share bike share program, but I can do it whenever you want me to do it. Okay. Just don't lose sight of it and then we'll come back at the end when we take up Correct. questions. If you don't mind. All right, so page 15 then, members. Okay, and, and one other um, correction on this page as well in under the, the item, the heading under unappropriated balance and public works board, there's a, an, an arrow there that refers to the commission on revenue generation. That actually would not be under the, the board of public works. That would be still remaining in the unappropriated balance, but for the CAO. Okay. Page 16. The changes beginning on this page are those which have um, are, net, are neutral in terms of funding. There's usually special funds or something to go along with them. So these begin with uh, the building of building and safety. Okay, very good. Okay. On page 17, uh, beginning with transportation. This also indicates the increases that would, are recommended to the, both the reserve fund and the budget stabilization fund. So notably, uh, with these changes, the reserve fund would be at what level and the budget stabilization fund would be at what level? The uh, reserve fund would be at 6%. And uh, the increase to the budget stabilization fund would go up about a million to a total of about 93.4 million. I think combined, the, the percentage would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 7.7%. Is that a new record? <laughs> I believe so. I believe that's a leading question, Council. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, exhibit H. Okay, the next few pages are the uh, changes to Exhibit H, the committee had requested that we um, make recommendations to kind of clean this up. Exhibit H is intended to be uh, a place where instructions that would implement the budget um, are, are placed. So what there are a number of items that are deleted. Those are primarily to, because they're policy issues and may be going, may be more appropriate to go to, the, to a committee first uh, and to the council. They're either or not required for implementation of the budget. They may be pending before um, council committees already, or they're, they've been moved to the report section. So on pages 18, 19, and 20 are those uh, amendments. And uh, I should also point out that there's one addition, and that was uh, based on discussion with regard to the restrooms at Venice Beach. Okay, that anything on else, 20. members, on Exhibit H? Great. Okay. Brings us to page 22. 22 are general instructions. These basically are routine items, uh, instructions to ensure that funds are deposited into the general fund, invoice for grants, uh, et cetera. So these are these have do not have a budgetary impact, but they they are just instructions for the budget. Okay. Um, I want to be making a recommendation with regard to the MICLA designated projects, um, both the Arbor Lurds and the, oops, excuse me, the Taylor Yards uh, G2. So we'll be discussing that. Mr. Kretz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Under uh, animal services, uh, I certainly support the addition of a resolution authority without funding for a volunteer coordinator. Um, the department also requested an executive assistant to manage the work of the Animal Services Commission, and I'd like to suggest the committee include that in the form requested by the department as an additional unfunded resolution authority. That, that would be on page 22 under the technical adjustments. Yes, under Animal Services and the technical adjustments. So add a resolution authority without funding. Yes, for executive assistant. Okay. 
Anything else on page 22, members? All right, moving on to page 23. Page 24. Okay, nothing else on page 24. Mm -hmm. Our final page is 25. Page 25 are the, and this is a list of the, well, during the course of the discussions, there were a number of requests for funding of different programs. And so not, not everything that was discussed in committee was recommended for funding. These are the, the requests that were left unfunded. Yes, Mr. Englander. Just want to, for the record, point something out on under the fire department, several of these items, um, the NPU and um, some of the CAD, some of these things, it looks like we um, hopefully have identified some possible funding to come in during the year from the Medi-Cal reimbursements, which is a direct nexus to this. Mm -hmm. So want just folks to know that we're not, not funding it this year. It looks like we've actually identified it, but it'll come in as those funds. And I think that motion was just approved by council today. That's correct. We're okay. referring to this list as Mr. Kokorian's parking lot. I believe that's what he termed it. Um, but actually, I think there is a recommendation contained in here relating to that there funding is. source. Uh, is there not that it'll be uh, it, set aside in the event that it comes in, can't be um, uh, considered revenues yet until it does. That, but that's that will correct. be a funding source that will be available to support some, because some of these are obviously pretty high priorities, um, but that is an appropriate place, I think, to be able to provide funding and it will hopefully come in at a time before any of this funding, uh, these unfunded programs would uh, we'd feel the impact of them. So thank you for the clarification. Uh, anything else on this page, members? Okay, and one other thing in that, I won't go through every single page, but attachment A are the requested um, reports. These are the special studies. These also include the referrals of the budget memos to various committees and other uh, reports as needed. So there's, I think it's 100, let me get the total, I think it's 114 14. requested reports. All right, very good. Um, so, Mr. Schreiber? Oh. Okay. So if we're gonna be going back, I believe that would to take us back to page 11. Yes. So I guess I have the, the first recommendation. On page 11, members, um, just to refresh your memory, the <clears throat> gang injunction uh, curfew settlement provided for up to $7.5 million to be expended on a variety of services for the benefit of the class members. Um, that was uh, a maximum amount that would likely be spent. Um, and it is unlikely that that entire amount would be spent in the next fiscal year. Um, so what we, uh, what the CLA was proposing is for, for the fiscal year to reduce that budget allocation um, by $2 million. I would recommend um, reducing it by another million dollars actually. And um, so that we would uh, be re have a total decrease of $3 million. And I'd like to, that million dollars uh, to be allocated to the Economic and Workforce Development Department for a variety of positions that would be necessary for implementation of the economic development and comprehensive job creation strategy that um, the ad hoc committee is currently has underway, which could include uh, a Los Angeles business team uh, and many other proposals um, will be providing uh, for uh, full year funding for an assistant chief grants administrator, a senior project coordinator, two management analyst twos, and two management assistants uh, for the implementation of that jobs creating program. Great. So that would be my proposal and my motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on that? 
It sounds like a good thing. The only, the only concern is we're, we're taking it's one time money that's going to be put into an ongoing cost. Is that? It's not clear where the how much of the implementation will be one time and how much will be ongoing, um, since it is the initiation of a new jobs creation strategy. Some portion of that certainly will be ongoing. That that is um, a legitimate point. You're right. Uh, for that million dollars, some portion of that million dollars probably will be ongoing expenses. Um, and with that, you know, I think it's important that the positions be resolution authorities for that reason. So we'll we'll set them aside as RAs. Okay, great. I think it's a, it's an important priority. Yep. Thank you. All right. If there's nothing further, um, okay. that motion will be adopted then. Okay. That uh, brings us next to page 12, and that was Mr. Bonin's. Uh, motion with regard to the five million dollars in rapid rehousing vouchers. That will be revenue neutral for the budget. That's um, correct. It will simply be uh, an adjustment that will allow the policy committee to have further discussion. Am I right, yes. Mr. Bonin, about those yeah. priorities? Yeah. So I think that and it keeps it consistent with the budget recommendation that was made by the mayor. All right. Any concerns about that, members? Seeing none, that will be the action of the committee, um, as well as to make the very important correction in the next recommendation, changing art to community. Thank you. That brings us then to uh, page 13. And Mr. Kretz, uh, you had a recommendation with regard to uh, the planning department. And, Yes, um, that was to uh, take the $250,000 from the planning, long range planning fund, schedule 29, and to uh, uh, put that in the unappropriated balance to fund the preliminary steps of the wildlife corridor by initiating a wildlife open space study. And uh, we did this working with you know, planning and the CLA and uh, it's expected this will have no general fund impact whatsoever. Okay. What is the long-range planning fund used to finance currently? So that, that's actually an off-budget item. It comes primarily from fees. It's used to support the department through the collections of fees. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Then Mr. Bloomfield? Not on that point. A different separate item. So okay. That's All right. Is there any discussion about Mr. Kretz's suggestion? Seeing none, uh, that change will be the action of the committee. That brings us, uh, Mr. Blumenfield, you had something else on page 13? Yeah, it's more of a question. Uh, the public works, the, um, the one-time funding for graffiti abatement, we're, we're cutting that to, to 750, cutting that in half of the, uh, only making a half of what we're going to increase. We're still increasing it. But uh, I've been told that that may be, not impact the valley as much, or, or in other words, the valley may not um, get those services. Is there some language we can add to make sure that that is spread out throughout the city? So my understanding is is that uh, this funding would be used for the existing contractors. Uh, it would actually there are 13 uh, contractors right now, it, and it would be evenly distributed. We can certainly have uh, an additional report on how those funds would be allocated. It could come back uh, to the council prior to the expenditure, and it, uh, perhaps the board can delineate how they plan on splitting up, uh, dividing up the uh, additional funding. The, the intent originally was to provide it to the existing contractors, but of course, if we have a report and you decide that it the valley isn't adequately covered, um, you can get that report back and ask for the board to consider uh, alternative uh, uh, alternative direction in terms of how the money would be appropriated. Okay, either that or, or include some direction in the language that says it should be appropriated uh, proportionally. That is also an option, right? Or why don't we do both? Okay. <laughs> so I'd move that we do both, have some uh, directive language inserted as well as a report back on, on the intention. I'll second that motion if it needs a second. Okay, anything else? Stringlinger, did you have something on this page? Okay, so on uh, the additional funding for human trafficking and prostitution details, um, extremely high priority 
this would fund police overtime allocated to those responsibilities. Is that right? Correct. That's correct. Okay. So what I would like to propose, members, that uh, is that we uh, it obviously include funding for this program uh, in the amount of a half million dollars, um, but we take a half a million dollars from the police overtime line item to fund this, and then this funding could then be used uh, to support the um, uh, information technology agency uh, enhanced cybersecurity tools uh, for uh, the high priority um, vulnerabilities in yeah. this city. So, yeah. So, so in other words, add funding for contractual services funding for enhanced cybersecurity tools at ITA and instruct the CLA in the final committee report to reduce the line item for police overtime sworn by $500,000 and then add $500,000 to the line item for human trafficking and prostitution details. Let me, let me, let me also just note for those who are... Um, microphone. Microphone. For those who might be uh, tracking this as well, we do get grants, and I believe we have some scheduled for Public Safety Committee, uh, specifically for human trafficking and the prostitution, prostitution details as well. So there'll be, that's not the entire pot of funds. Um, just want folks to know that as well. There's a lot more available that come throughout the year. And that's great. And this is also an enhancement of what's already been funded in last year's budget. So we, so we should, we're working on a we pretty robust program and we obviously need more. So, um, so in other words, the net effect on this program will be a half million dollars increase over what uh, had been proposed um, with a half million dollar reduction in the larger police overtime fund in order to finance this. Then this funding will go to pay for the cybersecurity issues. Does that make sense? Yes. Makes sense, yes. Any, any concerns about that or objections or questions, Second. members? All right, uh, seeing none, that will be the action of the committee. Uh, page 14, uh, there was just the technical correction of changing 10 neighborhoods to 15 on uh, the second to the last bullet point, or diamond, I guess. And page 15, um, you already made the technical correction that the Commission on Revenue Generation would be uh, within the CAO's office, Correct. right? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Should make the DOT motion? I'm sorry? Is this where I should make the DOT? Sure. Uh, so, uh, colleague staff, uh, what I'm asking here is to, uh, for a revenue neutral uh, proposal, a shift in the Department of D the Transportation's funding in order to uh, give the department the necessary resources for implementation of the car share and bike share program, which was identified as a priority by the department. Uh, and to do that, what the department recommends they could do is uh, change the expenditures in their mobile source air pollution reduction trust fund, Schedule 10, uh, and to eliminate $350,000 for the EV pilot program and instead put it into the city car share and bike share program. I'll explain more specifically the change, but I'll also explain first the rationale. Uh, the department is very confident they can get other grant funds to do the EV pilot program, uh, but they can't get grant funds. It would have a considerably more difficult time getting them for the car share and the bike share program. And the car share program also particularly focuses on uh, sharing of electric vehicles. So it's a sort of win-win from that perspective. So the, the technical modification would be to provide resolution authority and nine-month funding for one management analyst two and a transportation planning associate two from the mobile source air pollution reduction trust fund in the amount of 180000 $843 for the car share and bike share programs, and to provide funding for the Mobile Source Air Pollution Reduction Trust Fund in the amount of $169,157 in contractual services for professional services related to the car share and bike share programs. And I have that for your convenience all written out. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Kretz? Um, I, I'm a little concerned because I think that's an important program. Is there 
some logical way to flag this for us during the course of the year so that if we um, don't achieve the grant funding that we're looking for that we can look at adding that back at a future FSR. Yeah, certainly. We can have that. Uh, we can have a, a, a periodic report in Transportation Committee uh, throughout the year if you'd like. Yeah, maybe we could try to report on that quarterly and sure. see whether we've made the progress that we need to to, Happy to make so. sure that program happens. We, we can add that as an instruction or sure. if you'd like. Or it's up that to would you. be great if we could add that. As I'll do it without, with or without, but okay. either way. Right. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Blumenfield. Uh, thank you. And I, I also think the EV program is important. Um, you know, we talked about before having one way to help fund the EV program was to, for the public facing uh, EV stations to have, uh, to actually charge for those as opposed to the, the, the ones that are just for city employees. And maybe that's another way to add uh, revenue to get back to the uh, the EV pilot program, because I do, I do want to see that move forward, um, see as many charging stations as we can, and we can certainly scale it up much faster if we're, if we can make it uh, revenue neutral, which I think we can. Okay, anything further on Mr. Bonin's motion? All right, if there's nothing further then as Revised, that will be the action of the committee. Okay, that brings us to page 22. And um, that, uh, Mr. Kretz, you had a, I thought you had a question on this page or a comment. If not, I'll do the Mickle issue. Yeah, didn't 20, make a 20, note. 22, sorry. we had just asked that uh, an executive assistant oh, be yeah. added to uh, animal services as a unfunded resolution authority. Okay. Uh, any concerns about that, members? It's an RA, unfunded. Okay, seeing none, that will be the action of the committee as well. All right, now with, with regard to Mikla, um, I appreciate, Ms. So, that you started us off with this discussion and talking about the different function that Mikla has than other appropriations, in, well, than other parts of the budget, because it does not constitute an appropriation of funds in the slightest. Um, setting aside a potential uh, future financing and expressing an intention to do that, however indirect, is very different than, than funding a certain amount of money for a project. Um, so uh, I respect and appreciate the fact that you've pulled that um, recommendation, if you will, out of the budget because it has not been vetted by the policy committees. The general concept certainly has over many years, but this specific proposal has not been vetted by any policy committee, um, and I don't think the council is prepared yet to be able to make an assessment about the merits of the underlying proposal. That being said, as we heard from Mr. Veres at the beginning, there is um, some sensitivity around continuing to express um, a desire to pursue this option. And I think um, the Taylor Yards uh, pri uh, parcel has been seen as the linchpin for LA River revitalization for many, many years. So I do think that there is value in um, expressing that intention, um, that indirect intention to hold aside credit availability in case um, a transaction can come together, in case the council is able to complete its vetting of that transaction and approve of it, I think it would be um, obviously a grave mistake for this committee to get out in front of the rest of council in making a determination of those things. We simply can't. We don't have the information in front of us. Um, so what I would like to do is propose that uh, the Arbor Lurds uh, funding uh, line item not even funding, the description within MICLA, as well as uh, the Taylor Yard G2 description uh, be included in order to preserve that pro process of continuing to express our interest in holding aside the available debt, uh, the, uh, the available financing capacity um, in the event that that goes forward. I would reduce the amount, though, of the Taylor Yard's um, 
allocation from the proposed $60 million to $40 million. And um, I think we should add uh, a note into the budget that none of the funding for any of these, uh, or for either of these projects, uh, can be um, appropriated until such time as the Council has made a final determination on the merits of the underlying proposal. Until there's a, a transaction completed and um, approved by the Council. And then I would ask for one other thing. I'd like this, both of these matters to be referred for consideration by the Arts, Parks, and River Committee. Mr. Blumenfield. Um, I, I don't know if you meant to leave it out, but I, I'd like to add in, I think the same issue is with the North Atwater Multimodal Bridge to keep the description in, uh, as that's also a leveraging issue and, and a sensitive issue and with all the same provisos that you, that you mentioned, uh, but for the very same reasons to, to keep consistent, to keep uh, that million uh, description in the capacity uh, as you described in as well. Thank you. Any other comments, members? Any objections to that approach? Any additions to the instructions on that approach? All right. Seeing none, that will be the action of the committee as well. Now. Mr. Corey, just, just, yes. to be, just to be clear, one of the reasons I assume that you're, you're lowering it to 40 is because you're assuming the 20 million uh, additional of of the state, and that's sort of symbolically, it's still the same chunk of money being described. It's just how much we're assuming the capacity of the city is going to take on. That's consistent with the philosophical approach I'm taking without presupposing anything to do with the nature of the transaction or the elements of the deal or um, uh, the vetting process that the committee that the council may go through in considering the, the deal. Yes. Uh, anything else, members, on that matter or anything else in the recommendations regarding the budget? Really? <laughs> going once, going twice. All right. Yes, Mr. Gretz. Just kidding. All right. Um, well, then, with that, uh, I would entertain a motion to approve the recommendations of uh, the CLA as amended by this committee today. I make that recommendation. The matter's been moved and seconded, and um, is there any objection? All right. Seeing none, that will be the action of the committee. So um, that means, members, that we have a budget proposal that will be referred to the council next week. Um, once again, we've done it with, uh, I think, tremendous efficiency and um, uh, we, we've achieved a result which continues the city on its path towards recovery, towards restoration of services, while maintaining uh, uh, fiscal stability. And I think, um, I, I really can't thank you members enough because this has been a long journey that we've been on and it's getting better every year as we get further and further out of the hole that we were in not too long ago. So thank you all, each and every one of you, and to your staffs, of course, as well. Uh, Nicole Bernson, Laura McLennan, Dave Hirsch, John Popoch, my the inimitable Matt Hale, uh, as well as the rest of my staff, Irina Brunosian, and my whole policy team, planning team, and transportation team. I want to thank you all. Uh, Mr. Williams, uh, I want to thank uh, Richard Williams and Erica Polst um, for their uh, patience and work with us, uh, Miguel Santana and the entire office of the CAO, uh, particularly Jacob Wexler, Melissa Fleming, uh, the Budget Memo Squad, who, you know, the Green Berets of the budget. Um, I want to thank, of course, uh, our the masters of our budget, uh, Sharon So and Karen Kalfayan, uh, and the whole office of the CLA, including especially Roy Morales, Andrea Galvin, and the rest of their colleagues for um, the amazing work that you've done each and every year that we've been here. Uh, we couldn't do the work that we've done in this committee without the strong support of our council president, uh, Herb Wesson, and uh, his deputies, especially Andrew Westall, Ed Johnson, Justin Wesson, and the whole team. And the rest 
rest of our colleagues on the Council who throughout this process have shown great respect to the work that you've all done in this committee and uh, so I want to thank them as well as all of our general managers for coming through and participating in this process and their budgetary and departmental staff and the many other people in this horseshoe and in this building uh, who behind the scenes make us all look good and make this process run smoothly. It, it really has been a joy to get through this. So um, with that, unless there's any further business, Mr. Bonin. For, you forgot one person, and that's you. Uh, I've seen this process for many, many years, uh, as has Mr. Englander, and I don't think it's been done better than the way you have helmed this process over the past few years. So kudos. Thank you to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. I Mr. Kretz. Yes. I certainly agree with that, and I would also uh, add uh, the mayor's office and, and a good co collaborative with them. I'm sure you intended to <laughs> include them, but... Uh. Well, and let me just do that, if I may. <laughs> Please. Um, because I meant to say at the beginning of this whole, but actually before the CLA even came up, I don't think there's been a budget that we've had, at least under my chairmanship, and maybe not in recent memory, where the mayor's priorities and the council priorities have seemed to be more aligned than this one. And there's been a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of uh, noise and, and uh, angst over some small things in here. But the truth is, there's been very little disagreement on budgetary priorities. And that, I think, is a tribute to the mayor's entire budget, to the mayor himself, of course, and his relationship with our council. But the whole mayor's budget team, Matt Zabo, Matt Crawford, um, the whole team, uh, we've worked so well, not just in the budget hearings, but over the course of many months leading up to this. And I think people who don't participate in this may not understand how much of that goes on before the budget even gets here. And um, really, it, it, to the whole mayor's team, thank you, Mr. Kretz, my goodness. Um, we've really had a great collaborative relationship in working out the vast majority of small issues well ahead of time and realizing the joint uh, priorities and concerns that the council and the mayor uh, have had on behalf of the city. So thank you for pointing that out and saving me from myself. <laughs> Mr. Englander. I just wanted to, um, you, you've already mentioned all the names and thank everybody as well, but I know Mike had mentioned um, you, Paul, is I, I, I've been involved in this process now for 13 years. Um, gone, this is, in essence, my 13th budget. And many of those have been oftentimes till midnight. Um, scrounging at the last minute uh, the very next day as well and repeatedly and going through that every single day and not having much better than a budget than we have now. In fact, this is more stable, realistic, um, and opportunistic to solve some of the many crises we've got. I mean, the true challenges are now implementing these dollars to make and affect some incredible changes that are before us, um, be it homelessness, a spike in crime, dealing with real issues in our communities. And so, but the fact that you've taken this to a whole nother level in efficiency and meeting those mandates, um, looking at those challenges and all of us funding them appropriately to the best of our ability with what we've got to work with uh, in such an expeditious manner that has been so um, open and transparent is a breath of fresh air. So with that, I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right, if there's nothing further, at 10 after 3, going once, going twice, the Budget and Finance Committee's consideration of the Mayor's proposed budget for 2016-17 is now adjourned. Thank you very much.